A comical episode related to a statement about a possible war between the Russian Federation and NATO took place live on the Kremlin channel Russia One. Military expert Mikhail Khodorenok, who was invited to the studio of Solovyov's talk show, said that in an unconventional war, NATO would crush Russia, which has no chance in a military confrontation with the North Atlantic Alliance. All this happened against the backdrop of regular statements by the Russian authorities and the Kremlin that Russia is allegedly waging a war not with Ukraine, but with all of NATO. In the third year of the war with NATO, in Solovyov's studio, they admitted that Russia will not be able to handle a real war with NATO and will be rooted since it does not have the resources to compete with Western countries, comments on the video on social networks. Khodorenok stated that NATO surpasses Russia by several orders of magnitude in some respects, which promises Russia a complete military defeat. According to him, Moscow's only chance in the presence of nuclear weapons. However, this has long been clear, even without experts. After the Ukrainian disgrace of the Russian Federation, there can no longer be any talk of any serious Russian military power. The Russian Telegram channel Seatel Vetra comments on the video. Since Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, NATO has scrambled to present a united front against Russian aggression. Its member states have plied Kyiv with weapons and punished Russia with the most severe economic sanctions ever imposed on a major economy. But they have wavered on Ukraine's bid to join the alliance and remain divided over further financial and military support for the battered country. A mutual assistance clause sits at the heart of the Security Alliance, which was formed in 1949 with the aim of countering the risk of a Soviet attack on Allied territory. Article 5 of NATO's Washington Treaty says that an attack on one ally is considered an attack on all member states, which presents an obstacle for Ukraine's membership while it remains at war with Russia. A NATO pledge asks members to spend 2% of gross domestic product on defence. Though less than a third of members meet this target, Stoltenberg has said it is increasingly considered a flaw, not a ceiling. NATO's biggest player, the US, spends almost as much on defence as the next 10 spenders in the world combined. NATO's resources have been bolstered by the accession of two new member states since the outbreak of the conflict in Ukraine, Finland, which joined in April 2023, and Sweden, which was admitted in March after a two-year struggle to overcome vetoes from Hungary and Turkey. Despite Russian forces' well-publicized struggles, their overall military capability is considerable. A Russian woman from the Kursk region has caused a stir on social media by sending an emotional video message to Putin. In her statement, the woman expressed dissatisfaction with the ongoing military actions and their consequences for the Russian border regions. After the Ukrainian armed forces began a military operation in the Kursk region, Russians felt the weight of the war and understood the feelings of Ukrainians, now demanding that the Russian authorities withdraw their army from Ukraine. Vladimir Vladimirovich, please take your troops out of Ukraine and it will leave us alone, said the crying woman. Tensions in the border regions of the Russian Federation are growing amid military actions. The military actions on the territory of Russia are causing serious damage to its infrastructure. Burning houses and destroyed buildings have been repeatedly captured on video after the bombing of the Russian army, which is trying to push the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region. The appeal quickly shared on social media, causing a lot of controversy in Russia. Some users supported her courage, expressing agreement that Russia should leave Ukraine and that this is the fastest way to end the war. Others reproached her for criticizing the policy, arguing that such statements could be perceived as anti-patriotic. Russians' reaction to the Kursk region offensive closely resembles how they reacted to Yevgeny Prigozhin's mutiny a year ago. It is one of complete apathy and shifting the responsibility for solving the problem to the federal authorities and law enforcement. Ironically, this is the public reaction that the Kremlin itself has sought to achieve with all of its actions over the past 25 years, and especially the past three years. Its efforts have resulted in the average Russian being completely deprived of civic subjectivity, with any manifestation of it immediately punishable by criminal sentences or being forced out of the country under the threat of imprisonment. So the Kursk operation demonstrated that civic identity is a formality for Russians and that it does not grow stronger in times of crisis.
Not even Kursk region residents lined up at military enlistment offices after Ukraine launched its attack on August the 6th. It would thus be strange to expect that men from the Zabaykalsky region in Siberia, for example, would line up to defend Kursk.